I once finished a lecture, approaches me a man, Dr. David Palkovitz, professor of psychology in Yeshiva University and a therapist for 35, 40 years. He heard what I said, I spoke about this, and he says, I want to share with you an experience. In walks one day to my office a 16-year-old boy from Flatbush, New York. Wonderful family. I say, what are you doing here? He says, my father wants me in therapy. Why? I've been thrown out of nine yeshivas already. It's pretty good for 16. It's not yet the Guinea Book of World Records. I mean, some of you have done better, but he's close. Dr. Pelkovitz tells me, Rabbi Jacobson, I like, you know, sometimes you see somebody and after five seconds you just know that you like them. <laughs> you can't help yourself. It's a good guy. He says, this kid was great. I loved him. And after the first session, I said to myself, he ain't need no therapy. He's good. He's on top of his game. His father needs the therapy. So I tell the boy, next week, do me a favor, bring in pop-up, bring in mom, bring in your siblings, and if you have grandparents, bring them in too. I say, Dr. Pelkovitz, I never heard of people bringing in Zaydas and Babas into therapy. Really? You can ask an 89-year-old woman, so what are your feelings about your mother? We American brats have the luxury to have issues with our mothers. They, they had issues with their mother. They were happy if they had a mother. If they had a mother, they was already magical. If they survived, nobody had the luxury to have all these emotions towards their parents. He says, you're right, but I had a hunch, and a therapist got to follow his hunches. I said, okay. The next week, in comes pop-up. Pop, mom, brothers, sisters of this boy, and father's father and mother. Dr. Palkovitz tells the father, why don't you share your concerns? He gets up, and here he goes. He says, I have an unbelievable family. And he goes, this one, you thought I was joking. I rush koilala, rush masifta, rush yeshiva, amagad shia, machana, he finished daf yoimi seven and a half times. He finished Mishnah Brewer 12 times. He's the biggest bal chesed, and he goes to his daughter's humble, and I have one 16-year-old boy, sleeps till four o'clock in the afternoon, couch potato, plays video games the whole day, he's on his phone, he's addicted, he does nothing, he has a good head, wastes his life, it's an embarrassment for me, it's an embarrassment for the family, it's an embarrassment for him. As he's talking, his father, the old man, the grandfather gets up and says, I would like to say a few words. And this is what he says. I was born in Poland. I had a big family. I was the black sheep of the family. Today they would diagnose me as ADD, ADHD, PDD, and all the wonderful titles. In Poland they didn't have these diagnoses. For all kids there was the same treatment. We even had it in our youth. They took your fingers. You remember anybody had this chos? Pum, pum, pum. This was the treatment for every type of problem. Or they pulled you by your ear. Or they gave you a fraske, a fraske. Some kids, I have to say, were healed miraculously. <laughs> Some not. Okay, but that's how it was. There was one treatment for everybody. Okay, I still had a teacher who locked kids up in the closet, put them in the garbage can and put the garbage over them, and all the other brilliant pedagogic skills that many of us had to to see from uh, the PhDs in education. He says, this was Poland. I was the black sheep. My, my, my brothers learned in Polish, uh, but in Madrashas, Yeshivas, Shtiblach, I didn't. And my father would chastise me. I was street smart. I was an entrepreneur. I was like a businessman style. 1938, I put my hands on a book. I lift up the book. I purchase it. I read it from cover to cover. The name of the book, Mein Kampf, by Adolf Hitler, Yemach Shemai. I come home. I tell my father, Poland is on the border of Germany. I read Mein Kampf. He is going to do whatever he said he's going to do. In a few years, there will not be a Jew left in Poland. My father looks at me and says, you're nuts. You should sit and learn like your brothers. You won't speak nonsense. He said, listen, I should sit and learn like my brothers, but you know that I'm smarter than my brothers. I'm more savvy than my brothers. I'm more shrewd than my brothers. I have a hunch, and I know it's true, and I'm telling you, take the family and escape now, because it's going to be too late soon. My father argued with me. I argued with him, and at the end I told him, Tati, I'm going to have to go myself. 
I said goodbye to my father, my mother, my siblings. I left Poland, I left Eastern Europe, I crossed the Atlantic, I came to America. After the Second World War, I found out that I was the sole survivor of my entire family. As you know, I built a beautiful and successful business, and here I am today. I look around my family, and I look at all my grandchildren, and I ask myself, which grandchild resembles me most? In character, in personality, in disposition, and in demeanor. I look, and I see this young man. And he points to that 16-year-old boy, and he says, you are a replica of me. And I want to tell you, all of my dear children and grandchildren, if not for a boy like this, according to natural circumstances, none of you would be alive today to be able to sit and learn Torah. I dare you, never ever denigrate a child like this. It's to a child like this to whom you own your existence and your ability to steig and to be successful as humans and as Jews. You're my boy. Dr. Pelkovitz tells me you could cut the tension with a knife. The session was over. <laughs> Nobody else had anything to say. I look at him, I said, Dr. Pelkovitz, you can't leave me hanging in the middle of a story. What happened at the end? He says, nothing happened. That was the story. He says, what's happening now? He says, now? It's 25 years later. The grandfather took this boy into his company. And he started to work for him. And he did well. I said today, that today, this boy runs the whole company. And all of his brothers work for him. Everybody. Today, so many children are dismissed. Because we don't have the depth. We don't have the tools. We don't have the know-how. To be able to look deeper and to see that these are souls that are pieces of God. Every neshama is a chelek eloika mimal mamish. And because we don't have the tools, we often, willingly or unwillingly, consciously or unconsciously, cast away la creme de la creme, the best of the best. The holiest of the holiest, the deepest of the deep, the most sensitive of the sensitive, and we're all doing wonderful things. We're fasting, we're doing tshuva, we're davening, we're learning. When there's children in the pit, stop fasting and go to the pit. And I don't know if there's a community today, any segment that doesn't have dozens, sometimes hundreds, sometimes thousands of children from wonderful families and difficult families, from broken families and wholesome families, from Heimische families and different families, from this family and that family, not struggling physically, emotionally, psychologically. Not because a father is necessarily abusive or a mother is abusive. Sometimes that too, and those are emergency situations. But sometimes fathers and mothers are good people. But the child is not getting what he or she needs. He's, they're not getting what they need, whether it's academically or socially or emotionally or psychologically or spiritually. And sometimes people don't even notice. We live in a time you have to listen to your children. Stop speaking and start listening. You have to listen to your children. You have to tune into them. You got to go into bed with them, Chavra. Put away the phones. You come home 6 o'clock, don't put your phone on vibrant and look at it every 11 seconds. You come home, you put away the phone, you put it in a drawer. You want to look at your messages, go back 9 or 10 or 11, look at me, sit by me and text as much as you want. I don't care. I have my own therapist, I'll do well. You could sit here with your phone and text Gesundheit, I'm fine. I'll deal with my ego and self-confidence issues later. <laughs> but with your children, don't keep that phone here. Put it away. Be there. Eat supper. Make jokes. Talk about your day. Talk about emotions. Tell them that you also struggle. <laughs>